Welcome to the Picture of Man tutorial. Introspective people often ponder the question, Who am I? Might a better question be, What am I? Many humans seek a spiritual experience. Could that be backwards? Maybe I am spirit having a human experience. The following diagram will help you to check that out. This diagram is a picture of man and represents the four functions of a human being. To present it step by step, we'll start by drawing a V and marking off the four functions. The difference between a dead body and a living one is the presence of a biological function, which we will call X. We borrow from algebra an X to represent the life force or the spirit or essence of a person. Because we can see that something is there, or not in the case of a corpse, but cannot precisely define it yet. We can call X the biological function, the essential intelligence, first force, the initiative of spirit to manifest in the human realm. The second function of life is its awareness function. Awareness function is not the brain or the five senses or the mind, but uses these, just as digestion is not the digestive organs, but uses them. The third function, physical body, is the motor function. And the fourth function is activity carried out. Life force, awareness, physical body, action. Here for you to check out is how man is designed to function. Awareness function takes in or receives impressions from the world as well as from within. Awareness function evaluates these impressions and forms a feeling about it which is reported to and registered by the life force. Feeling is the medium of communication between awareness and X. Sensations are not feelings. Feelings are the interpretation of sensations. For instance, I like the sensation, I do not like it, or I don't care. Liking and not liking are evaluations, but not the only ones. I feel this is to my advantage, or I feel this is not to my advantage, or I don't know, are much more accurate reporting, much more intelligent than like or dislike. Like or dislike are taste and conditioning and highly unreliable markers of what's to my advantage. To repeat, impressions are taken in, an evaluation is formed with feeling, this feeling is reported to X. X always does the appropriate thing for the information received through the physical body. Impressions are taken in. Impressions are evaluated by awareness. A feeling is formed about it. Feeling is a report to X. X responds appropriately to the information received. This is how man is designed to function. Balance is maintained. Regeneration occurs. Man lives harmoniously. This is the end of part one. The picture of man is designed to function. It is the human condition, however, that one seldom functions in this integrated way because of a fundamental erroneous decision as to the purpose of living. After you are familiar with the basics presented in part one, please continue to part two to see what's going on that has interfered with this harmony, eventually resulting in the disintegration and death of the human being. Part 2, The Picture of Conditioned Man with Purpose in Error We'll start with a little review. The four facets of a human being. 1. Life force, called here X. 2. Its awareness function. 3. Its motor function, the physical body. 4. Action carried out. X is the biological function or life force. Its awareness function takes in impressions from inner and outer worlds 
evaluates them with feeling. This feeling is acted upon by X, the life force, which does the appropriate thing for the information received through the physical body and action occurs. The uterine world is a place of comfort, complete non-disturbance. No effort is required to grow and thrive. Everything is provided. One day the infant dies to the uterine world and is born into our world. This transition is accompanied by stimuli of various kinds to which it is not accustomed. Constriction, gasping, bright light, relatively loud sounds, fluctuations of temperature. New sensations of touch, including aspiration of breathing passages, chemicals in the eyes, sometimes a slap on the behind and other insults, as well as the first hunger pangs. It is no wonder to us that the infant awareness function decides with great feeling, not words of course, that the whole purpose of living is to regain the recent non-disturbed state. We will place the purpose of living on the foundation line of the awareness function, for it is the foundation of all decisions made from this moment on, unless discovered, reevaluated, and remade. The infant becomes aware on a feeling level that crying increases comfort and decides early on to complain to get its purpose of living met. The first decision. This is appropriate behavior for an infant the only way it can tell us it is hungry, cold, wet, and so on. Eventually the infant's crying is ignored on occasion and it demands its way right now. The baby cries in a more emphatic manner, sticking up for its right to comfort. The second decision, every parent can recognize the sticking up for rights cry. The primal or master decision that the whole purpose of living is to regain the non-disturbed state is understandable for an infant. To seek it by crying and demanding are appropriate for babies, sometimes the only way they can get their needs met. Is this appropriate behavior for adults? How well does it work? Eventually, complaining and demanding fail to work all the time, even for the infant, whose awareness has noticed that smiling and cooing often get it pleasure and comfort. Awareness decides with feeling that the way to get its way is to please them. The third decision. This is the most dangerous and debilitating decision awareness has made because it sets up conflict. To be pleasing when one wants to cry or to demand when one knows mommy wants a smile creates a state of false emergency or conflict, not harmony. A split has occurred in awareness. Disintegration has begun. The child is eventually introduced to so-called authorities, teachers, police, others, and taught to obey them or else. The fourth decision. Although this is needed to a degree for the child's safety and well-being, it still puts him in conflict because of the master decision that the whole purpose of living is to regain the non-disturbed state. He wants to complain but must be quiet, or she wants to play but must go to school, and so on. Now the child's awareness decides that the way out of conflict is to improve himself, the fifth decision. He feels that he should be different, that he should act different than he feels, that he's not meeting standards, that it's all his fault. He or she blames self and feels guilty creates an ideal in awareness and struggles to improve to meet that ideal. Acting differently than one feels is uncomfortable and all the other A-side and B-side decisions continue the conflict. Awareness then decides that if he, she, it, they would change, I would be non-disturbed. Blaming the sixth decision is seen as the way to do this. I can't be happy until he or she or it or they change. Awareness blames everything but self. Impressions taken in. Impressions evaluated by awareness. Feeling formed about it. Feeling is a report to X. X responds appropriately to the information received. 
When awareness is in conflict, wanting at the same time to complain yet please, to demand yet obey, to feel guilty yet blame others, what is the feeling? Chaos is what gets reported. Operating this way since infancy has conditioned the person so that it is automatic. Emergency is reported when really there is none, or nothing but noise is reported as awareness vacillates back and forth between A-side decisions and B-side decisions. When a person is in this state, only disintegration can occur. X supplies special emergency energy to fight or to flee, but since there is no real emergency, this mobilized energy is unused to fight or to flee. It must go somewhere and eventually leads to breakdown of cells and or unusual behavior. All of this conflict and turmoil is based on the infant's conclusion that the purpose of living is to regain the non-disturbed state. This is a woefully inadequate purpose of living, made worse by the six childish decisions as to how to go about it. The only way out of this mess is to question one's purpose of living and find out what it is. This takes observation, dispassionate, objective, cool observation of self, watching what is said and done throughout the day and the motive behind it. This is not done with a spirit of so-called self-improvement, merely self-discovery. Objective, non-critical self-observation will become self-knowing and eventually will provide an opportunity to reevaluate one's purpose of living. One may determine that the old purpose is detrimental and wish to make a new one. Caution. No need to change or to blame. Just reevaluate consciously the purpose of living made by your infant self. Make a new one of your own adult choosing. Integration will ensue. Don't believe a word of this. Check it out for yourself. Following are a few ideas to check out for yourself. We all like pleasure and don't like pain, but is gaining pleasure and escaping pain the whole purpose of living? Or are pain and pleasure byproducts, side effects of living? Is there truly such a thing as an authority over you, other than yourself? Or are there merely experts, officials, and tyrants if you let them be? If it can be taken away by abuse, neglect, or any idiot with a gun, for instance, is it a right or a privilege given? Are any two people on the planet identical, standing in the same perspective? If not, can there be any standards whatsoever by which to judge anyone, including yourself? Is blaming nature or nurture, genetics, upbringing or environment for my predicament just giving away my power to live my own life? Have I ever made great efforts to please someone just to gain a feeling of approval for myself? Is such activity truly a gift? Or is it really a horse trade? Is whining a responsible grown-up way of getting my way? Am I free to experience whatever comes my way today? Can I stand up and live 